I understand that you're several years away from production, but you gotta give us more information. You have to show us a truck. What is going on guys? I hope you're having a fantastic day. If you are new to the channel, please drop a sub and leave a like. It helps me out and it's gonna help you and put you in the entry to win a $50 Amazon gift card as well as an awesome piece of wall art once we get to 500 subs. And I think that's gonna be pretty freaking soon. Today I wanted to talk about Nikola Motors. And I know I do a lot of videos on Nikola because it's a super controversial topic. It gets you guys going in the comments and I love it. I love the discussion. I own Nikola shares and I know it sounds like I'm one of those people that is just like, Nikola, they, they don't have anything wrong. There's no flaws with the company. Like they do everything right. I am not one of those people. I totally understand all the concerns and things that you guys point out. I wish Trevor Milton and Nikola and the execs were a lot more forthcoming with their information. I think that this they went way too hard out of the gate, man. You promised a ton, but you're three years from really producing any vehicles at the best. And now you have COVID on top of it. So your whole like your whole shipping and all that stuff is messed up. Who knows how that's affected their manufacturing. And totally, I get the concerns of like, okay, they're not really showing us anything. They're not forthcoming. Everything that they've built to this point has been prototypes done by Bosch. So it's like, are they even really gonna be able to produce this stuff at large scale? Is hydrogen gonna be like cost effective? Is it gonna be less than diesel? Is Tesla just going to destroy them uh, with like batteries that are lighter, longer lasting where, you know, N Nikola's claim to fame is going to be hydrogen and hydrogen stations all around the U.S. So if another company out there can do a battery better than hydrogen, boom, like that's done. You're out of business. It's not even a question. And then you also I've seen comments saying, well, Trevor Milton has said that he's got a battery way better than Tesla. I think Trevor Milton is a really good salesperson and I think he more than anything drives interest and attention to a stock. And I think if there's been anything that we've seen in the past like eight to five years, like starting back, you know, 2008, really coming out of the financial uh, recession was I think how much a CEO kind of, you know, pumps up or engages with Twitter or Instagram or his followers at all they build kind of a cult following, if you will. You've seen the same thing with Elon Musk. There's been people through the good and the bad of Tesla that would literally follow Elon off a cliff. You saw it with Apple and Tim Cook, right? Uh, or no, it's starting right, that's not Tim Cook. Now it's kind of becoming like that, but Steve Jobs, right? He was that same guy. People loved him and therefore they loved the product and they believed in the company, therefore they threw their money at the company and invested in it. And now they've been handsomely rewarded. So I think we're in a day and age where how much the founder and executives engage with people online plays a big role in attention, uh, both good and bad for the stock, which ultimately does drive the stock price. And I think that's a reason why you've seen a company like Nikola with so much controversy and so much doubt stabilize at where they are. Whether you like the company or not, you can't disprove or discredit the fact that their company, like all other IPOs, shot up out of the gate, right, came crashing down, and then it's it's bounced off the, the lows, and now it's stabilized at the, you know, $40 range. I think that's a safe bet, and as long as Trevor continues to drip feed, like, photos and information, and as long as they deliver at Nikola World, I've said that is the biggest thing. If they throw a big dud out there at Nikola World, like, they don't have a badger ready to show to people. It, it's not fully equipped with like technology, right? Because that is one concern that I share with you guys. It's like, why are you not, why are you not showing us stuff? Like, give us more. I understand that you're several years away from production, but you got to give us more information. You have to show us a truck that, okay, fine. It can be a prototype, but this thing needs to be on hydrogen, have everything in it that we are going to be seeing like come you know, two or three years down the line when all these people who have pre-ordered the Badger are receiving their truck. I want to see all he's talked about, like how you can drink water from the uh, the Badger that has hydrogen in it because it recycles the um, the fumes, not the fumes, but the, uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? So if they can't demonstrate the fact that you can drink water out of the truck, I think that's, that's going to be a big blow. Like if he said, okay, 
Six months ago, I said that you could drink water from this truck and bam, now I'm showing it. That is something that you promised and now you have delivered on. But if you do not deliver at Nikola World, your stock is going to be pummeled because everybody's going to be like pointing to Tesla. Everybody's going to be pointing to Uber and Google for all these autonomous driving and stuff like that. So for me, I view this stock, if you own it, hold it. I think you're fine. As long as you don't have a bunch of uh, your portfolio wrapped up in the stock, I think you're going to be good. Uh, because if you're willing to take a little risk uh, with your with your money and your finances, um, less than 5% of your portfolio, if it's a company you believe in and you're cautiously optimistic like myself, go for it. If it's getting to be more than 5% of your portfolio, stay away from IPOs. It's just or, or go with a company that you know has been proven like like Facebook, right? When Facebook IPO, there, were, there weren't as many questions as to kind of this company because it's been proven. They had something that they, you know, produced and gave to the public. Um, so just something to think about. So Trevor did release some images on Instagram. And I guess these images were given to all the uh, people who pre-ordered the Nicola Badger, but it's, it's nice to see that what they are producing is pretty cool. Like, I think that these images are cool. They are promising. But again, it looks like all they did was uh, essentially 3D print them. And now they're just assembling this for the one prototype. Like, I want to see you guys do this on a big scale. And that is going to be the thing you have to prove to investors that you can do. Yeah, there's analysts who cover the stock. And the target price is, you know, I think the average target price is like, $50, right? So that's a big return from where we are now, but we're not going to get there unless they continue to show and they can prove that they're doing stuff, not only at this one like microcosm level where we're building a prototype. A lot of people can build a prototype. It's putting that into market and getting people to buy it. That's the challenge. My biggest caution for anybody out there kind of considering or dabbling, putting your money in a company like Nikola or like you know, any IPO, any startup that essentially is pre-revenue, they don't necessarily, they don't have anything proven to this point except cool renderings or good ideas and stuff like that, is be extremely cautious. Do not get invested unless you are willing to lose it and, you know, take a 50% loss or something like that. Like, it's definitely a growth play. It is something that you need to be passionate about. And in the case of Nikola, um, you know, you need to be able to weather the up and downs. Like you have to understand that this stock is going to be volatile. It is going to be super freaking volatile for the next year, at least because they have said they're not going to start producing anything until Q3 of 2021. So that's a whole year where they're not producing anything. So the stock is going to bounce around. Now, if they do produce, I think you're going to see it continue to uptick. And you know, you're gonna be, you will be fine. If they don't produce, sorry, it's not gonna happen. You know, we're gonna lose our money and that's fine. If you do it wisely, right? Every investor out there wish they could have got in on Apple at a dollar, wish they could have got in at Amazon at $30. And if you smell BS and you don't like Trevor and you don't like the execs or the business model, don't invest. That is my opinion. And I think you guys should go with your gut when it comes to this company. So I know a little bit of a ramble in today's video, but before we go today in history, 1990, the UN Security Council authorizes military action against Iraq. And wow, there has been a lot going on in the Middle East for a long time. So it's kind of crazy to think in 1990s, really when all this began to start, um, yeah, in oil. But who knows, like the Middle East is known for oil. We're talking about EVs and stuff like that. And I guess fossil fuels are needed to produce like hydrogen and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, kind of in a wash a little bit. But anyways, that is a topic for another video. I hope you guys learn something or can at least debate me in the comments below because I love it. Keep it coming. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye -bye.